Look, I got my. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Where can the children order that? They need to know. I don't have any more. <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> Kennedy, you bring the merchandise on the show and then you tell them where to buy it. You don't bring the merchandise and say we don't have it. Well, maybe you can endorse me, bitch. I mean, <laughs> it's, out, it's hard out here for a pimp, okay? Hi, it's me, Trixie Mattel, and welcome back to The Pit Stop, the show where we recap RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 6. Today we're tackling Episode 5, and our guest is not only an icon, not only a legend, not only the 10 dancing toes of the diva from Texas, she's also the only person I've competed against twice, and honestly, one of the best competitors Drag Race has ever seen. Kennedy Davenport is in the studio, folks. Woo! Hey, sis! Hey, girl! How are you, honey? I am great, and it is so good to see you. I haven't seen you since you won. Girl, we have forever ago. That's the, that's what people don't realize. We, the, Drag Race is one of the only times any of us are actually in the same room together. Yes. What have you been up to, girl? How's life? Things have lightened up. Um, you know, the clubs and stuff are finally opening, and I'm just blessed to be booked. I have been consistently book, booked, booked, um, for a minute now. I mean, more so than I was if it wasn't a pandemic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's so many drag queens now though, girl. Don't you think the pandemic was good? Flush out the amateurs and then let the legends reclaim. It's flush out the ones that don't have any sense or business skills or bu business ethics. <laughs> <laughs> So girl, as somebody who competed on All Stars, what's the experience like watching it? It makes you feel like it was just yesterday that you were on it. So watching them just bring back so many memories, you know, and it's like, girl, good luck to the best home. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's literally the tagline of the show at this point. Good luck to the best home. <laughs> I have to say though, when you and I competed, we didn't have this format, which is the lip sync assassin. How do you think you would have performed in this format? You know, the girls would be scared to compete against, uh, you know, to lip sync against me. Yeah. But, uh, you know, anytime there's an opportunity to um, display my talent, I mean, I'm ready for it. So, and I like new blood. So I, I you know, I, I would stand anticipating who's going to be, uh, lip sync against me, you know. Oh yeah, spoiler alert. Apparently you, when you win a lip sync, you can win $30,000. I know, and that's tired, girl. Now, that's what I'm pissed off I about. Know. That could have been your money, bitch. What season was more challenging for you? Season seven or All-Stars 3? Of course, season seven. Season seven was the most challenging because I, I have I tell this story all the time. Because you haven't been on television, you know, that's the challenge. Then you get put in a room with uh, bitches you don't know either. And then you have to get to know them as well as do the challenges. I mean, it was just, it's a lot. It's a lot. The normal season is harder because you've never been on television. You don't know what's happening. But then All Stars is hard because everyone's rich and famous. Kennedy, I know that you're gonna be 100% honest about the girls in the gig today, so let's get into it. Last week, Jan scored her first win, but the lip sync assassin, Jessica Wilde, won the lip sync and revealed that the group had voted to send home Yara Sophia. Akira has now been in the bottom twice in a row. Kennedy, do you think that could mess with Akira's confidence level going forward? I definitely think it could, um, but knowing Akira like I know her, it is not gonna shake her much. She's still gonna step up to the plate and do her thing. But yeah, if I mean, if it messed with, I'm gonna say it with mine. <laughs> That's what it is. Either you're in the top or you're in the bottom. Somebody gotta be in the top and someone has to be in the bottom. And unfortunately, uh, I was there more than I wanted to be. You know, so it can definitely shake you. Uh, it also didn't help that every episode Ben de la Creme won. But sister, you remember when we helped her with her character and she ended up winning? Yes, girl, yes. Now you guys heard it here first. Kennedy and I helped Ben de la Creme the whole time and she would have nothing without us, okay? Now everyone knows. Ah, you said it, I didn't. <laughs> Even though the group unanimously chose to send home Yara, if Jan had won the lip sync, gag, she would have sent home Akira. Do you think Jen was shook having to reveal her lipstick? Yes, I do believe she was shook and her whole um, thesis on why she chose her was like bull <laughs> I, I think it was too. No matter what you pick, 
just make sure it's something you stand by because the worst thing that can happen is what's happening to Jan, where you're like, but I, 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 I did what everyone else, I, I thought what everyone else would do. I wish Jan would have just looked right at her and said, this is why I did it. But she didn't have a reason. Yeah. Yeah, just like me update me. <laughs> camera one, camera two, you got that? Okay. Okay, if you were Akira, would you use that as a motive to vote out Jan? Yes. I would too, bitch. Girl, so so you like set this question up. Um, you know, you set this question up because I mean, it happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, so that's how you feel. So I already know that as soon as I get the opportunity, you out of here. Yeah. You are out. I'm like, girl, snap. I'd like, I like, can't snap my finger. Can't snap in a glove. Insert snap. Snap. <laughs> snap out of here, it. You, you snap know? and I'll snap for you and they'll put the sound together. Right. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. All right, so the next day the queens talk about fashion. Who do you think is the most fashionable from this cast? So far, it's a few of them to me. So far, um, Akira. Yeah. Raja. Mm hmm. Even Eureka. Girl. It's some nice stuff coming down that runway. Sonique. Girl. You know, she's giving a very fishy, but fashion forward um, edge on things. That's about it. You know, Ginger doing what, she doing her thing. You know, Ginger <laughs> doing Ginger. It is so shady. <laughs> the Glamatol, you the Glamatol is doing her thing, okay? <laughs> Rue enters the workroom and announces that this week the queens have to produce and host a chat show, Pink Table Talk. Are you familiar with the Red Table Talk? Yes, I am. And I guess what are the qualities of Red Table Talk that you kind of like take away from the real thing? I love the fact that it's very intimate. Jada Pinkett has a way of getting people to open up, which I like. For me, the, looking at it is very uncut. I mean, and it's, it is raw, it's authentic. Do you like uncut? I do if it's clean. <laughs> so what do you think about this kind of challenge? It's a talk show, it's not scripted, they're being thrown into it. What do you think? I think it's great. You know, I love, you know, I love impromptu, improv, I love all of that. What do you think the key is to doing well on a challenge like this? To not be in your head. That's the key. Sure. Bitch, the first thing that come to your mind, just say it. Yeah, honestly, because if you're sitting up there trying to like write the script in your head, then it's not gonna be authentic. I know it's not the same at all, but since there's some improv involved, we have to pause and talk about the cultural reset that was your performance in The Bitchler. It was the funniest thing pretty much any of us had ever seen. You whipped off your wig and said, I'm a man. Yeah, you know, I really wish they would just release the unedited 10 minutes. Oh, it was packed. I mean, it was hilarious the whole time. I never took an improv class. But I do know as being a host and MC that you use everything around you. Everything around you, you use it to your advantage. So that's, girl, I just wish they would release everything. It was so <laughs> funny. So the three topics the queens have to discuss are body, sex, and motherhood. Which topic would you have wanted? I would probably have to pick sex because, I mean, I think that's relatable in every sense. Everybody can relate to sex. Yeah, and you have decades and decades of experience. The three teams are <laughs> Eureka, Trinity, and Akira, who choose sex, Jan, Ginger, and Pandora, who choose body, and Raja, Kylie, and Scarlett, who choose motherhood. Which queens would you have wanted to be grouped with? I would have loved to have been grouped with Eureka's team and Ginger's team. Eureka's, we're gonna get into it, but Eureka's team really, I think, had the rhythm. Ginger and Scarlett both really want motherhood and end up deciding by rock, paper, scissors. Do you think that's the best way to choose? I mean, girl, why not? I mean, it's not like you, I mean, we finna fight? I mean, what? A foot race? <laughs> girl, whatever. Yeah, girl, well, we know who's gonna win that. <laughs> Ginger mentions how motivated she is to do well this week. Kennedy, from your experience, what is Ginger like as a competitor? She is awesome. And we worked together more than one time during our season. That's how I know, you know, and we both have strong ideas which meshed well together. And that's how we were able to be so successful because we both put in our own input and, you know, and it's good to feed off of her. Part of the challenge is deciding who's gonna be the moderator. Would you have wanted to be the moderator? That's a hard question, girl. Yeah. It depends on who's in my group. I'll put it like that. 
I'm not finna put my faith in somebody that hands that don't know what they're doing. I think the easier job would just be to be a panelist, and then you get to nod and smile until it's your turn to talk. I mean, I seem, it seems like that would be the easier job. My thing is, Jan should have been the moderator as much as she was talking. With her first, like her, like her season of Drag Race, I was, I was on the Jan ride, baby. Yeah. I really was. But then when I started seeing her in these challenges, I'm like, oh, girl. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, so Scarlett and Kylie have a slightly awkward conversation about her energy level. What did you think about that? Why are you telling me now? <laughs> That's the first thing that popped up in my head. Why is you saying something right now? Yeah. You could have said something when we first started working on this that you didn't feel, that you felt some type of way. Yeah, and there's a way to say it that's supportive. Like, hey, I know the judges are gonna like seeing you in this role because it's, it's bigger than you normally do. It's more personality. You know what I mean? More encouraging. Mm -hmm. So let's get into this challenge. So first up we see Team Sex, Eureka, Akiria, and Trinity. How do you think they did? I think they did absolutely great. I think they did great, 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 great. Everybody had their funny moments. Everybody had their sincere moments. And even when it was sincere and emotional, you had Eureka big old ass just making it funny. So you like, you crying and then you were like, bitch, shut up, you make me sick. I know. You know. They were the first group too. And I was watching them going, wow, these other groups are gonna, it's gonna be hard to meet this. Next up is Team Motherhood. Kylie, Scarlett, and Raja. How do you think they did? I see where they are, like the, the, our sisters are asking more from Sonique as far as like, you know, she's very soft-spoken. But to know Sonique is to know she's soft-spoken. You know, she's not one of them, hey girls, you know, she's not one of them. She's never been. She's not like us. No, she's, yeah, right. She's not obnoxious. <laughs> but she just said it to be a little bit more intimate, um, a little bit more um, down home-ish. But she's <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Raja should have been the glue in the middle. Had Raja been the moderator, then you would have had two people over here fighting on who's going to sleep first. You're right. We finally have Team Body, Ginger, Jan, and Pandora. How do you think they did? I think the girls didn't step up to the plate. With Pandora's confessional, it just seemed like she would have had so much more to say. And, but instead, it's like she just went back into that door, maybe went in that closet and shut the door. That's a really good point. Like, Pandora's being the traditional comedian, she could have been for the first time being like, I'm opening up about something you don't know about. So which group do you think was the strongest? Eureka's group, of course. By yeah. far, by far. And which one was the weakest? The weakest would probably be... Hmm. Girl. <laughs> you don't have to pretend to deliberate. You know it was Kylie, Raja, and Scarlett. You know it. <laughs> yeah. Before the runway, the queens are talking about how they think they did. And this is where some of the delusion comes in. This is where some of the delusion enters the chat. Are you ready? Insert music. <laughs> Insert delusion music. From your experience, do you have a good sense of how well or how badly you performed? Or do you never know? Of course I do, because I'm true to myself and I'm honest with myself. So if I didn't do well, bitch, I didn't do well. But if I know for a fact I did good, I did good. Yeah, don't kid yourself. It's not cute to go, I thought it was great. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? Jan. <laughs> okay, well, you don't have to say her name. Next, it's runway time and category is Clash of the Patterns. What do you think of this category? I love it. It's different. And I love the different spins on it. What would you have done? Girl, I don't know. You have to be careful with patterns because it comes across tacky if it's not made right. Ginger could have worn something from All Stars too. Uh. <laughs> First up, Trinity K. Bonet. What did you think, girl? I love the look. It came full circle for me. I mean, I, I look head to toe. That's, that's the first thing I look at is what you have on your head. I, then I look at your makeup. Then I look at your accessories, then I look at your garment, and then I look at your shoe. And I mean, she did it for me. 
I loved this look. It was so beautiful. I will say, when she was painting her forehead yellow, I was like, what is she doing? But it all blends in. <laughs> it all works out. All right, Kennedy, next up, Eureka. What'd you think? She's very true to her pageant background. You know, I can relate to Eureka because that's probably what I would have done. I probably wouldn't have did like the hair. And I remember her season, they, they really talked about proportionizing. Yeah, she has a great silhouette as a big girl. I don't think I just, I just would have changed the hair. That's it. I hated that hair. <laughs> I hated didn't it. Give you, didn't it give you smushed in beehive, bitch? Smushed in stomped beehive. And also, I, I'm i okay when makeup doesn't have eyebrows. I <laughs> Wait. Look, you are so, no, bitch. Back up. <laughs> you told me I stomped. Stomped. <laughs> I want you stomp the runway, don't stomp the wig. Oh my God. Akiria. Shut down. You loved Shut it? Shut down, case closed. I loved it. I loved the fact that it was out the box. Like everybody did the same thing but her. And you got this cone coming out your head with measuring tape, bitch. Come on. Yeah, it was wild. What did you think of Raja O'Hara? I think it's classic Raja. For me, she's very editorial. Mm -hmm. She's tall, she's long, she knows her body and I mean, it just came full circle for me. I feel like she took the challenge and did what she's supposed to do with it, and I love it. She looks so beautiful. Her makeup is so beautiful. Kylie Sonique Love, what do you think? It kind of steps outside the box of drag and gives you drag as a woman. You know? And she's beautiful. And she's beautiful. <laughs> She's gorgeous, but let's not take away the fashion. Did you love it? Yeah, I love me a mule with a heel on it. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Uh -huh. A mule with a heel on it, okay? And she had a nasty spike heel on there. What did you think of Miss Scarlet Envy? The makeup is so beautiful. Yes, it's, it's almost like a 1940s, 50s type of girl. Yeah. And it's, I mean, she's, she's like a movie. I love the fact that she got the opportunity to explain her dress because other than that, I'll be like, what the f is that? Yeah, the dress for me, <laughs> it was a no for me, dog. I thought her hair and makeup was beautiful. The dress, I was just like. You didn't like the dress. If you have to explain it, it was not successful. Oh, girl, oh my God. So what do you think of Jan? <sighs> I just need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, what is the purpose of these stirrups? Second of all, why do you have any color stocking going into a white shoe? See, well, you, I mean, you can't defend her because you used to wear the white shoes with everything. Oh, I still do, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the, the body part of the dress. You know, they sing a song that goes like this. Black stockings, white shoes, shouldn't be allowed in the church. <laughs> oh my God, Kennedy! So what did you think of Ginger's look? You can't go wrong with the glamour toad, okay? You didn't live? I thought this was like the best Ginger's ever looked on the runway. It's the best that she has looked. But do, am I like, you're not gagging. Do, is it at my top? Is is at the top of my list? No. But I mean, it's made to perfection. Yeah. The hair being kind of asymmetrical with the hat, with the bug net. You know I love a story on the runway. I love a theme. I love a narrative. Yeah. And it yes. fit her perfect. I, she looked, and she's the only person who yeah. did neon, so she really stood out. Great look on Ginger this week. So what did you think of Pandora's look, Kennedy? Again, I think she falls in the category of ginger. Like there's, they are, I don't want to say stuck, but they just did them. So, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Would I have worn it? No. I didn't live, I didn't live. Was it, was it multiple patterns? Yes. Was it a clash of the patterns? Sure. I just thought it was, it was giving me Nightmare Before Christmas. Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas going to the Sadie Hawkins dance. Yeah, and she just gives me that nobody, nobody wants to dance with me to um, tease. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. 
So who had your favorite look, Kennedy? My favorite look is Akiria. So beautiful. And who's your, who's your least favorite? My least favorite would definitely be Jan. <laughs> God bless her. God bless. God bless Jan. Rue announces this week the best team is Team Sex, but the top all-star of the week is Ginger Minj. Do you agree? Ginger stood out in her group. Uh-huh. And she was, I guess she was more natural than everybody else was, but I really like Team Sex as a group. In the bottom is Kylie, Scarlett, and Jan. Do you agree they did the worst? Yeah, they did the worst. I hate the word worst. They did the least <laughs> good. Nobody bombed, you know, well, you get my saying, you get what I'm saying, bitch. We see the queens plead their case. Scarlett thinks Jan should go, and Jan is struggling to understand her critiques. What did you think about that? Well, first of all, can we can we bring up the fact that Ginger repeated the wrong thing to her? Scarlett did not say that to Ginger. She did not. Cause she was like, well, Scarlett said to you. you, you, you. <laughs> I know! Say that, girl. Would you think that was strategic? to probably pull what Jan would have said, yeah. I think so too. Ginger already know, she know how to play this game. Yeah. She already know who you finna send home. So why is you cooking the pot when you don't have to cook the pot? Girl, that is the tea. Okay, that is the tea. You don't have to be doing all that. All right, so we return to the main stage and at first, we think the lip sync assassin is Bianca Del Rio. Were you curious to see Bianca lip sync? Yes, I was. You were? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think would have transpired? We never seen her lip sync. I never even seen her lip sync on the show. So I'm like, I mean, on a regular show on any given day, I have never seen it. So I'm like, uh, this should be interesting, but why is she here? So we find out the actual lip sync assassin is Mayhem Miller. Kennedy, do you think that Mayhem has perhaps a little more lip sync experience than Bianca Del Rio? Oh, well, a lot more. <laughs> Girl, let's get into it. So Ginger and Mayhem lip sync to Phone by Lizzo. What do you think of the lip sync? I love the lip sync. I mean, it was full of character. I mean, it was just full of action. I, and Ginger, oh my God. Girl. I mean, I knew Ginger was a good lip syncer. I've lost a lip sync to Ginger in season seven. She whipped my ass, but she was so good in this lip sync. When she laid down on that stage with her head off the stage, I was like, Ginger! So Ginger wins the lip sync, do you agree? I think it was neck and neck. Which is saying a lot for Ginger. Yeah, if I chose, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, bitch. So Ginger winning means she wins $30,000. She even gives $2,500 to Jan and Pandora. What did you think about that? Give me away money. I think that's, I think that is absolutely great. And if she's a woman of her word, she's definitely gonna give that to them. But I think, I mean, I would probably would have done the same thing. So that's where you and I differ. I would have let all those hosts starve before they would have seen a penny. Oh my God, and I believe <laughs> you. So Ginger reveals that she has chosen to send home Scarlet Envy. Do you think this was the right choice? No. Who would you have? I would have sent Jane home. Oh my God, Kennedy. So once again, we hear about this game within a game. What twist would you like to see with the queens who are eliminated? Who doesn't love a redemption, honey? The girls going home, bitch. Have them some way trying to come back, bitch. Yeah. To fight to win, girl. Kennedy, what queen do you think in this cast has what it takes to win All-Star 6? My tops would definitely be Ginger, Eureka, mm -hmm. Raja. Akira. I think my picks currently would be Raja or Ginger. Ginger really impressed me. This Ginger this episode reminded me why she is a competitor. Kennedy, thank you so much for joining me today. You are an icon, you are a legend. I've missed you and I love you so much. I miss you too, I really do. And um, and I love you too. And I'm so glad that you, you you have me on the show. I hope we make good TV, girl. I think we do. And also, I mean, you're such a good competitor. I'm always like, who can we have who's going to give very good critiques, who pays attention? I don't say things to be shady. I really love each and every one of those girls. And thank you all for watching The Pit Stop. Make sure you join us next week on the RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel so we can recap episode six of season six of All Stars. Goodbye.
Bye. Bye. Kennedy, give him a good old pageant wave. Probably my favorite Ginger Minge runway ever. Okay, give me one second. Let me put this in here because I hear my Bluetooth doing some things. While Kennedy looks for that, why don't you visit wehatejan.com for Kennedy Davenport merchandise. Kiss my ass. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel and you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.